So for cranial nerves, I'm going to give you the mnemonic that my teacher gave me. It goes ooh, 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 to touch and feel very good. Velvet. Aha! <laughs> And if you memorize it, you'll know it that way always, forever. So, because even after all these 14 years, that's still how I remember my cranial nerves. So, this is the mnemonic to remember. Our cranial nerves have a name and they also have a numeral. So, a numeral is a Roman numeral. It is not a number. So, all of our cranial nerves can also go by their numeral. So, cranial nerve number one is the olfactory nerve. So if I, if I give you a, a quiz question that said, give me the, or a test question that said, give me the names, numerals, and functions of every cranial nerve, then you had better not give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in numbers. I don't want to see two because we don't have a cranial nerve number two. We've got a cranial nerve numeral two. So this is how we tell them apart is by looking at their numerals and the numerals are accepted throughout all medical fields. You can use the numeral instead of the name. So you have to know both. So our first is olfactory and olfactory is bringing in our sense of smell. Cranial nerve number two is the optic nerve and this is bringing in visual information. Cranial nerve number three is the oculomotor nerve. Oculo referring to eyes and motor referring to motor control or movement. So this controls four of your eye muscles that control voluntary eye movement. I'm not going to make you memorize the specific muscles, extrinsic eye muscles. So just know that this is responsible for voluntary eye movement. All right, next is our trochlear nerve. This, also, this controls one of those extrinsic eye muscles, so it's also involved in voluntary eye movement. You've got two T nerves, the trochlear nerve and the trigeminal nerve. So I remembered which is which because I like nice multiples of five or something. We also have two V nerves and I remember the vagus is 10. So our multiple of five is really, it comes with our trigeminal nerve. So if you're trying to remember which is which, the trigeminal nerve is number five and trigeminal nerve is pretty cool because it's got three different branches that branch out and serve your face. So your trigeminal nerve is going to be bringing in sensory information from your face as far as um, touch, temperature, and pain is concerned. So touch, temperature, and pain from these regions of your face are going to be coming in through your trigeminal. And then it's powering the muscles of mastication. So it's got a motor function for muscles of mastication. Yeah, they're mixed nerves and you have to know one of each. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. All right, so that's our trigeminal. And the interesting fact about the trigeminal nerve is that if you have cold sores or get cold sores ever, that's a result of the herpes virus. And it sits in your trigeminal nerve in the soma and just does its thing. It goes through this uh, lysogenic cycle, so it makes more copies of itself. And then you get really stressed out. You're studying for an AMP test and you get really stressed. So it thinks you're going to die or something. The virus doesn't really know. So it's just like, i got to get out of here. The host is in trouble. And so it travels down your, your trigeminal nerve, and you'll start getting cold sores on your mouth, or sometimes you get them on your nose. And that's because now that, that's entered the lytic cycle and just tries to eat up your cell so, and reproduce. Pretty interesting. 
All right, the next muscle is also another motor muscle for one of those extrinsic eye muscles. So it's, con it's controlling voluntary eye movements. Next we have what's called our facial nerve, and our facial nerve is also carrying sensory and motor information. The sensory information is coming from the anterior two-thirds of your tongue. So everything that you taste on the anterior two-thirds of your tongue is coming in through the facial nerve. And then the motor output is our facial nerve is controlling the motor output to the muscles in our face. So motor to our facial muscles. We have a different nerve that is responding to the anterior or posterior one-third of our tongue. So how you can remember which is which is that the facial is sensing the front or the anterior two-thirds of your tongue. So taste information on the anterior or the front of your tongue is coming in through the facial nerve. Okay, our first V cranial nerve is the vestibulocochlear nerve. It's got two branches. The vestibular branch is associated with this part of your inner ear called the, called the vestibule, where all of the organs that are involved in sensing like equilibrium and balance are located. So this, the, that first part, the vestibular part, is responding to information about equilibrium. It's helping you sense you basically your location of like your head and how you're balancing. So it's involved with equilibrium. This cochlear branch is going to be attached to the organs of hearing in our ears. So this is what's helping us to hear. So the vestibular cochlear nerve is important for both equilibrium and hearing. So if you have vertigo with the vestibular vestibular Cochlear nerve, it's, it's, yeah, there's something happening in the communication between the specific organs in your ear that are sensing it and the transmission through your brain. All right, glossopharyngeal is our next nerve, and this is also a mixed nerve, and this is the, glosso is referring to the tongue, pharyngeal is referring to the pharynx, the sensory function is that glosso part. This responds to the posterior one-third of your tongue for taste. And it's got motor output to the pharynx, or to muscles of the pharynx. Posterior. My marker is not lining up well. Sorry about that. So the posterior one-third of the tongue, your taste information is coming in through glossopharyngeal, and then it puts motor output to the muscles of the pharynx. Okay, here's our second V, and it's our tent. So, and it's really cool. It's a cool nerve, the vagus nerve. It's a really cool nerve because this is a cranial nerve that extends all the way out of your head, down through your diaphragm, and to your visceral organs. Brain? Yeah. So our vagus nerve is cranial nerve number 10, and it's really important. It is, it's going to innervate our hollow organs, so it's got sensory and motor output. The sensory input that it's bringing in is all of our like visceral sensory information. So it's doing things like sensing level of stretch in your hollow organs, uh, sensing level of stretch in your heart. So visceral sensory information that you're not really aware of. And then it's also giving motor output to those organs as well. So it'll be putting out your autonomic motor output to your hollow organs. So you'll talk a lot about the vagus nerve next semester when you get into the organ systems.
All right. Are we good on Vegas? Mm -hmm. What's the, what was the last one? Oh. Uh, hollow organs. So motor oh. output to our hollow organs. Autonomic motor output to the hollow organs. All right, number 11 is called the accessory nerve, and this is also giving motor output to the muscles of the pharynx. Your pharynx has a dual role in the respiratory and digestive systems. You'll talk more about it next semester. And then our last cranial nerve, cranial nerve number 12, is hypoglossal, hypo being below, glossal being the tongue, and this is putting motor output to the muscles of your tongue. So I'm just about to talk about that. I'll give you another mnemonic for remembering. So you do need to be able to identify your cranial nerves on the models. I won't give you the half that has them in numerals. I'll give you the half that has them in numbers. So make sure that you can find the cranial nerves. We can't see oculomotor on this model, I don't think. I think that's the only one we can't see. Uh, but everything else you can see, so you do need to be able to identify them. Our olfactory bulbs are sitting at the bottom of the frontal lobe. They're attached to olfactory epithelium that continues back into the olfactory tract and is bringing the information off to our temporal lobes. We've got our optic nerves that are going to be coming in from the eye. Half the visual information crosses over at this region called the optic chiasm. And then information, the visual information from each eye will then continue back through the optic tract to your occipital lobes. This is your oculomotor nerve, we can see here. Trochlear nerve, you can see here. Trigeminal, we can see two of its branches coming out right here. Abducens, facial, vestibular cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus is this big guy, and hypoglossal, and accessory nerve. So make sure you can identify them on the models. And then you do, yes, have to tell me if they're sensory, motor, or mixed. So sensory nerves contain only sensory neurons. Motor nerves contain only motor neurons. Mixed nerves contain both. So they have both sensory and motor neurons. All of your spinal nerves are mixed nerves, but your cranial nerves can be one, the other, or mixed. So they can be sensory, motor, or mixed. All of your spinal nerves are going to be mixed. We'll talk about spinal nerves for the next test. So how you're going to mem remember which is which for your cranial nerves is that we're going to do this other mnemonic, which goes some say marry money, but my brother says big brains matter more. So all of these S words are sensory neuron nerves that have only sensory neurons. All of the M's are motor nerves that have only motor neurons. The B's are mixed nerves that have both. But if I put M words here, you wouldn't be able to tell which were mixed and which were motor. So just be aware that our Bs are standing for our mixed nerves and they contain both types of neurons, okay? And so this is in order, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Yep, so that's an order that goes with our other mnemonics. So if you remember those two mnemonics and then the nerves that go with them, you should be good. So again, some say marry money, but my brother says big brains matter more. All right, so let's just have a quick look at each of these. Uh, again, cranial nerve number one is our olfactory nerve. It starts with the olfactory bulb here that continues back in the olfactory tract. It's associated with what's called olfactory epithelium at that superior nasal concha. You were probably wondering why you had to know what that ridge was. Well, because we're going to talk about senses, and they're coming in there, this region, this olfactory epithelium that's specialized. It's got special sense receptors, chemoreceptors, that are going to detect different levels of chemicals coming into your nasal cavity. Cranial nerve number two, optic nerve. Optic nerve is interesting. It's, it's, each of your optic nerves is carrying information just from one eye. And what's interesting about vision is that the left side of both of your eyes sees the right side of the world. The right side of both of your eyes see the, sees the left side of the world. That's what gives you binocular vision. And so the optic nerve has information from both sides of one eye. And it's interesting because at the optic chiasm, just the medial side crosses over. So that what winds up happening is that at this optic chiasm, you're bringing in information then. Now the information that's carried back in the optic tract is mixed from both eyes. We'll talk more about that when we get to vision. Vision is really complicated. Everything comes in upside down and backwards and cr crisscrosses over and is mapped all the way at the back of your brain. It's pretty crazy. Okay, oculomotor is going to control four of your extrinsic eye muscles. Again, we don't have to worry about it, but this is our, what's controlling our voluntary eye movements. Trochlear, controlling one of our um, extrinsic eye muscles, so important for extrinsic or voluntary eye movements. Trigeminal, this really cool nerve. This is where uh, the herpes virus hangs out. It comes out and it's going to serve your face. This is a mixed nerve bringing in your sensory information about temperature, pain, touch, all of that, and then it's motoring your muscles of mastication. So your sensory function is that it's serving your face, your motor function is that it's motoring your muscles of mastication. Mm -hmm. Abducens, again, is going to have this motor function for voluntary eye movements. Facial nerve is going to be another mix. It's going to have the motor function of powering your facial muscles. It's got the sensory function of bringing in um, the, the taste information from the anterior two-thirds of your tongue. Okay, next, vestibular cochlear. Again, it's got this vestibular branch that is responding to information about balance and equilibrium, where your head is, all that stuff. And then the cochlear branch is associated with the cochlea that's bringing in your auditory information. Glossopharyngeal is, again, an, a mixed nerve that's bringing in our sensory information from the posterior one-third of our tongue, and it's powering our, this, these muscles of the pharynx. Vagus nerve is so hugely important. Really, I mean, it's going to come up in 202 as well. It's this cranial nerve that extends all the way out of your head, all the way through your diaphragm, <laughs> and hits all of your organs on the way. So it functions, or somatosensory information from your pharyngeal muscles, but then visceral sensory information from all of your hollow organs. And then it's executing motor commands that are also, that are being executed through the autonomic nervous system. So that are beyond your conscious control. And it's also doing motor output to our, our muscles of our pharynx. Hypoglossals are next, and it's going to power the muscles of your tongue.